Okay, let's try this again. I got interrupted the first time I tried to make this video. Hello to all you out there in YouTube land. A special shout out to my three subscribers. I greatly appreciate you taking the time to subscribe to a channel that had no subscribers. Uh, I'm going to try and make as many videos as I can, get them uploaded as rapidly as possible to give you all something to watch. I enjoy YouTube a whole lot and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy my videos as well. Now the impetus for today's video is my work with uh, GMRS. Now if you're not familiar with GMRS, it is the General Mobile Radio Service. Um, it's a thing we have here in the United States. Um, it is the licensed version of the Family Radio Service, or FRS. Um, for you in England and Europe, I th maybe PMR 440? I don't know, maybe that's the Australian UHFCB. I don't know, I can't keep... It's hard enough keeping the American radio standards down. Uh, has eight channels on the top eight channels you're allowed you're allowed 50 watts I believe there's also another eight intercital channels that you can run five watts if you have a license or I believe you can use it licensed by rule so long as you use a 500 milliwatt blister pack radio like the one you can see laying on the bench here put it on top of the multimeter That may only be an FRS version. I've had that one forever, but I don't know where one of my good Midlands is currently. Oh, right here. I know that one does GMRS. But bear in mind, you got to be careful which channels you use if you're just going to go buy one of those off the shelf from, say, the sporting goods store and not acquire a license which is eighty five dollars It's very understandable that you wouldn't want to go through the red tape paperwork hassle to just spend eighty five dollars for a five-year license I did it so I can operate repeaters and things and I don't have to worry about the government coming and knocking on my door about it fully legit everything's good and covered um, one thing I want to say is there's because GMRS is in the middle of the UHF land mobile band, it's between basically the police and fire and private land mobile licensees and the paging frequencies. So it's a little hard to get equipment like proper antennas and uh, getting a whole RF system set up where everything's spot on perfect. It's very hard to do. You have to make a lot of compromises. My current compromise, and what the focus of this video is going to be, is I have been offered to co-locate on a 198 foot tall tower, and the antenna that's on it for the cabinet that I will be co-locating in, its tip is at 172.5 feet. Much better than any of my proper sites since I was looking at mainly putting it about 80 feet up so this is a more than double my original theorized height uh, problem the antenna when you look at it on the antenna analyzer shows no good at 462 some odd megahertz seem to be good around 450 it is a dual band antenna and it's going to have a VHF ham radio repeater on the same antenna feed line and cabinet as my GMRS repeater however the antenna did not check out good for that so so talking to them, some other local ham radio operators with whom I am acquainted they all said L network just build a simple L network just match the antenna make the transmitter happy 
everything will be good to go. You know, you'll be able to receive. The antenna will be at 172 and a half feet. Receive isn't going to be a problem. Um, if I lose a little receive through the through the L network, maybe I'll put a preamp on the receiver or something. Probably not. The good thing about that is I don't have to worry about finding a tower site, putting an antenna up, hanging the hard line, yada, 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 yada. All I got to do is get the cabinet, bottom part of the cabinet ready for my equipment and basically install it and be done with it. So, that's a very good option. Get some of this junk out of the way. No, I'm not editing these videos. What you see is what you get. Maybe someday I'll figure out how to edit. Well, so, long story short, I built a hell network. Located the screwdriver to the computer. Yes. Well, before I show you the guts, what I did is I took an old Dentron brand junior monitor HF antenna matcher, turned it into a UHFL network. Now before I show you the ugly construction inside of this thing, I'd just like to tell you it gives a 1.2 to 1 or better match on an antenna that has over 2 to 1 mismatch. So it works fantastically. Uh, I've already done a key down test on GMRS, full power out with very little reflected power back to the transmitter. So here we go. Simple, very simple UHF L network. See if I can get the camera in a little closer here so you can see what's going on. Alright. What we have here multi position switch. Turn it in and turn it out. Have a coil which is multi tapped through the switch, which then goes to an air variable capacitor and then to ground. And that's it, that's all it takes. Nothing more than that. Like I said, with the SWR power meter and the antenna analyzer both show it to be doing a very good job. <clears throat> Leave that open so we can see it. Very simple construction. Built with parts completely on hand. Didn't buy a single thing to make this. Um, But for anybody out there that has a SWR problem on the VHF or UHF bands, I would highly suggest an L network. After I assembled and tested this thing, I walked around for probably 10 minutes wondering why it worked so well. It's absolutely astonishing. I, I think this will solve the problem. I'm going to dress the case up a little bit more find something to blank out all the whole extra holes and stuff in it and just get its shielding sealed up a little bit better uh, I guess the next step will be to uh, film the repeater site so stay tuned for that um, may also 
film a video of the repeater in standalone form just while it's here on the bench so you can get a good look at it before it goes in the cabinet because you probably won't see much of it after that uh, got to clean the cabinet in the great flood of 2011 it got a little water in the bottom of it so it needs a wire brushing and a coat of spray paint maybe some new weather seal on the door <clears throat> So I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope a look at my ugly, quick, dirty, hacked together L network that works absolutely flawlessly. I hope that gives you some ins inspiration should you ever have an issue with a repeater site, your home station, because like me, I'm a ham radio operator and a GMRS licensee. So to have all the different multiple antennas it would take to have a you know perfect impedance and SWR for every different band that I need to operate on would just is not really logistically feasible it would require multiple feed lines or antenna switching and multiple support structures and it's just not really worth it so easiest thing to do is switch an L network into the circuit and just match it for the band you want to be on. As easy and cheap as this was to build, I don't see why you couldn't have multiple position antenna switches, multiple permanently tuned L network sections, and just switch what you need in and out of the line. So, hope this has been inspiring or at least uh, shown you how easy it is to fix simple RF related problems. Hope you have a good day. Stay tuned for more.